on we start the the events connected to two projects project bull and project digitrea one financed by adrio interregalion and the other one financed by erasmus plus um, thank you for gathering uh, in this uh, atelier uh, it's the for us it's an important day because with the full project partner we share this space we have a twin uh, a atelier in uh, croatia in mayur um, this uh, place was selected uh, some couple of years ago because uh, this place is special then uh, uh, mr fiorot will explain why but uh, summarizing a little bit, it's a, 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 an experiment the municipality of Pordenone did. This place belonged to the municipality. They opened a tender to better qualify the, the city center, a tender for uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, they won the tender. Uh, they won a payment of 50% of the renovation of the, of the building. It's 1,000 square meters in the center, and they can keep the, the building for long. Uh, the rest was paid directly by them. And this was the perfect place to match public bodies, so the decision makers, companies, and uh, what we are doing with the project pool for creativity and uh, uh, new jobs related to pool. Uh, this place uh, for sustainability of the project and of the investment with, with pool will be the headquarter of uh, the regional cluster for creative industries. So all those uh, economic activities connected with uh, uh, smart wool productions could have uh, voice in this, in this place and could have assistance to get other financing and, uh, and tenders in the future. Um, today we'll speak about the result of uh, the, the two projects, Bull and Digitrea. We start with uh, Christian Fiorot, the, who explain what what is this place and the effect on uh, economic activity and the public. Thank you, Diego. Um, welcome, Fiorot. Uh, I'm very happy we can open this very important workshop for by presenting uh, the building you are now in. So uh, as uh, Diego anticipated, uh, it was abandoned, not used for uh, more than 10 years. This was a, a former uh, warehouse. And then after the opportunity the municipality gave us, we renovated everything here. Now you can see uh, there are a lot of equipment and just the biggest area available because we are just finalizing the other renovation for example here on my left so on your right side we are finalizing three different uh, classrooms in the back of the uh, lab there are uh, there is a structure on the roof as you can see where we will place a green screen for shooting videos and pictures and then in the um, right side here where you can i think when you enter you had a look on the on the room there is an immersive cave so it means there is a a room where on all the four sides we can represent any kind of 360 degrees videos animation or any other uh, multimedia immersive production that can be used, for example, today we are um, uh, showing a video about the wool project as that will be named uh, the, the wool atelier, the immersive wool atelier. But the atelier could be used for many other projects, as Diego said. So uh, think about, for example, have yourself immersed in an area, in a place that is very far from here, or in a place that you will build in the future. So you can have a preview before even uh, start putting the, the first brick on the ground. So you can uh, oh, design uh, new buildings, new areas, but also equipment, for example. 
And of course, everywhere here and also in the Merciva uh, lab, we can use the uh, hardware you are having now as a gift from the project uh, at the entrance. I don't know if all of you have got one, uh, but also, you know, those uh, uh, digital helmets like those produced by Facebook, so Oculus and any other technological devices that can immerse yourself. We are thinking about looking at the future. So all of you already hear about metaverse that now it's a little on hold, but of course it's just uh, the, 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 the period now, all the big players in the world are thinking about the new standard for metaverse, but of course it's something we cannot come back from. So we are looking also to handle technology in a creative way to think about the future of the communication, but also on the way people will live. That's why, for example, the ex-actors, together with the Paul and Diego, are uh, describing the venue is living lab. So this is a living lab. It's a uh, term that comes from the European Commission to describe a venue where all stakeholders from a territory, so schools, for example, entrepreneurs, uh, research centers, institutions, private companies can work together for thinking about the future, about new policies, about how the, the, the landscape for youth, for silver age, for companies can be and design new projects. So this is why we started working on this. And the idea has been, again, as Diego said, uh, being selected by the municipality for a very important uh, prize in terms of uh, support, financial support. Uh, but also, I want to thank also Paul and Nino for believing in our idea because the project could not be uh, finalized without a mix of support. It's a huge project in terms of resources, but also in terms of um, making it, it useful for the, for the schools, for the area, for the economy. So that's why uh, I'm very happy because today it's the very, very first event that can um, take place here. So I hope on both the project that Diego introduced or did you uh, but also for the good project that at, at, the, end, at the end of his uh, program. Um, uh, a good and uh, success, and thank you again, uh, Diego, for uh, the opportunity yeah. with that together. We have a couple of questions to you, Christian. Uh -huh. um, can you describe what kind of consortium companies is here, and to better explain why we set yeah. the atelier? Uh, yeah, uh, our company. It's uh, Alia, it's a digital marketing agency. And we are leading a network of company in Italian related impresa. It means that uh, many companies group together for having a bigger uh, size and a wide uh, solution and offer in order to work and uh, disseminate good uh, and best practice in the area. So we have at the moment five different companies and every company is specialized in a specific, sorry for the same terms, um, area. So we are again involved in the digital communication. Another um, partner is a software boutique. So they develop custom software. Uh, another one is a system integrator for um, ERP and other uh, softwares and technology that are used in the in the in the manufacturer's company. The fourth one works in the artificial intelligence and machine learning. And the last one is uh, specifically works in the uh, virtual reality and immersive world. So partnering as uh, uh, together our five companies in a unique um, venue, of course, you know, can take out the most from any single skill, any single uh, company. And working together, of course, it's not like adding uh, skills, but it's a um, multiplying factor. So 
sharing together ideas with different technologies, with different know-how, can of course design projects that are not, let's say, uh, they, they don't have the same but higher potential than when you think alone. This, I think, is also one of the core uh, scope of the, this venue, to share experiences, to put together different backgrounds, different know-hows, and also to deal with uh, schools, schools and uh, young people have always very good idea. They do live in the current scenario. And, and of course, uh, you can have many ideas, but maybe the difficulty is to put on the ground, to um, give your ideas to someone that can believe in and give it a try. So this is also our scope for this area. And that's why the public uh, sector, the institutions uh, want to put resources on this in order to risk, let's say, together, because we need to give young people an opportunity. So also the point is that uh, these five companies are leading uh, companies in their sectors belonging to big industry trade unions. What we want them to do is, of course, continue working in their market and follow their customers, but also help trade unions and uh, the public sector to develop the supply chain and perhaps the laboratories, the training, the events you will do here will help us to select some smart young guy that could open his own activity or can be enrolled in your staff. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> now the floor to Eva, who speaks about the project boom, yes. the expected outcome. So I would like to, oh, first of all, to thank you all to to be here with us um, in uh, this special day. Um, I would like to present and explain in an aspect what the Project Bull is and uh, has been during uh, all these years because we started in the, um, 2020 and we are finalizing uh, at the end of this month. And I will turn for a while my computer in order to see and here also my presentation. I I prepare like the PowerPoint. So let me just for a second search because it's too heavy. But I don't want to like uh, take a lot of time in order to. So I will uh, explain briefly what I want to say about all. So then the speakers next to me will have enough time. So. Yes, okay. Try it again. Yes, so this is the same. Uh, okay, I guess you see, yes. okay, so VUL is about valorizing uh, VUL as a natural resource because, uh, as you probably know, this uh, raw material, this special material, in uh, all around Europe is throw away or is seen as a, a waste, a special waste. And we don't have the opportunity or some people have, and they uh, are enthusiastic about uh, the material and they create their own artisanal uh, atelier shop. But if we look at the breeders and those um, stakeholders, they, they don't have enough support to think about how to use wool as the final stage. So how to improve it also uh, his usages. So we work all together. Uh, you can see the partnership 
which is composed by two regions from Italy, Fluminense Giulia region and Basilicata. So then we also involve Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro and Greece. We work all together in order to enhance the shift boost supply chain as an important resource. So how to protect the material and immaterial social cultural heritage connected with the material itself because together with the material like what is the tangible there are related intangible activities that has to be valorized and preserved in the territory area so the project has aimed to enrich the sustainable touristic offer based on the combination of wool and also the shepherd in an innovative way as you may see from the immersive laboratory that we compose here. So we build up together with the companies. We have also one, a special one in Mayur in Croatia, uh, which I, of course, I invite all of you to, to go there because it's really um, interesting also because it engages uh, high school and primary school. And there is um, also interesting content there. Um, so the specific objective whereabout has have been uh, identifying the existing product and wool realities in the different region. So we um, study, analyze and then write in specific publication that you uh, you will probably see in the bag that we re you received this morning. There are many publications telling what we identify on existing products, and we will try to create a strategy to optimize the use of these resources in an, in an innovative way, uh, using the, of course, the thematic wool and also the pastoral, uh, yes, the pastoral, the, the, sh the shepherd heritage. Uh, we create a wool brand uh, with a slogan, wool we like, because we think the marketing campaign is uh, extremely essential when we look at the material and all the activities connected with it. Um, very briefly, we analyze, evaluate the capabilities and capacities. We promote and training because we did many, uh, as you can see from here, we did many trainings on the usage of multimedia and um, how to um, do and shoot uh, amateur footage for breeder and artisan to valorize territories. As you can see here from this slide, we also held some innovative training on um, the different aspect connected with the wool fibers. Um, in this occasion, we were uh, in some uh, high school um, here in um, Pordenone, Cividale, and this um, territorial area. And we create a sort of impact in the territories. And the other partners did the same in theirs. Um, as you can see in Slovenia, they held specific trainings on weaving techniques uh, for artisan weaver weavers training on dyeing domestic wool with natural colors, which is pretty interesting. Um, and there are a few people doing that and we have to increase the number of them. Um, so during the project, we enforce and focus the attention on the training and the education field, which is um, extremely important because it's the only way to give to wool another perspective in the market and also in the world. Um, as also uh, Christian uh, explained before, we launched a pilot atelier, so we will have many opportunities, initiative to build here in here, in this place, together with the citizens, together with uh, the local authorities and all the relevant stakeholders that they want to participate on that. This is the Atelier in Mayur. As you can see, they, they purchase uh, helmets, as in our case. Um, we also create a wool documentary, which will be explained much more in details by Professor uh, John Carney later on. 
Um, so as to conclude, who I would just want to say that uh, with a question then probably with responses. So why wool is important? Because it may feel the tradition on the local communities. It is authentic and healthy. It is eco-friendly, connected with shepherd and shepherd story, sheep story, sorry. And of course, resilient, because you know that uh, wool has many, many characteristics on the, the, the product, which is. Um, I don't want to uh, say more on that, because I, I would love to, for all of you to experience later on the immersive content, so the documentary that we create, we also elaborate it with amateur footages and then also Christian and his team help us to develop the, the final um, content. Um, so I think we may uh, go on on the next presentation. Professor, uh, yes? Yeah, okay, yes, Franco. Ciao, everybody. <laughs> I'm a friend of Wi-Fi for the <laughs> highway <laughs> moving up and down, but I wanted to, to come here in a so beautiful place to look at smiles. All of you are smiling. What's happening? Touching the wool, or staying in a so beautiful, let's say, going on place. Uh, we know that we produce much better if uh, we work in a nice place, in a nice atmosphere, and if we smile. It's from yesterday the result of the biggest uh, experiment in, in, uh, in UK, working four days, did you read about? And working four days, uh, the productivity, the, the production, not the productivity itself, so the production increased and people are much happier. Okay, this is <laughs> from yesterday. But uh, I, I want some one of you to raise the hand if you know what is unique for the wool. Why wool is unique or what wool contains as unique property? Yes, please. Why is unique? Yes. Uh, but even things that consist of the wool is very unique. Uh, it can uh, hold the uh, 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 corrosive and very high pH uh, value, so it won't uh, deteriorate easily. Uh, in my you are an architect. On top of that, yeah. inifugus doesn't doesn't flame. Yeah. Doesn't flame. Okay. Not negligible. <laughs> Cotton, cotton uh, go to fire, and and wool not. Some more. You have something. That's my passionate. <laughs> <laughs> I pick it up so much longer because of the operation that I do. But by the way, is super hypoallergic. And this, these are a unique peculiarity of the wool, known, known, maybe not technically, since, uh, since uh, ancient ages, because, uh, because it was the, 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 the main clothes after the skin of, uh, <laughs> of, the, uh, of the beer that they used to, in, in the past, uh, they, they used wool before then cotton, be, 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 because then, then everything to, to cover and to also to fabric, home and whatsoever. <clears throat> we are finalizing this experience of sharing best practices in wool. What uh, Polo Tecnologico is uh, super happy to promote uh, uh, activities that are not necessarily, let me say, technological, but uh, I used to say that technology is uh, the engine for a better world, for a better world. Uh, the, the, every time that there is uh, a 
strong technology, the world is getting better. If uh, uh, now we are talking about industry 4.0, uh, keep in mind that the, the, the first technology so uh, was uh, was a steam that moved to automation in the fabrics, et cetera, et cetera. The second was uh, uh, electricity, energy, okay, that gave the light in uh, in the homes. The third is automation, and the fourth digital transformation is what we are living. Why I'm 100% convinced that technology is helping for a better life, for a better world, Be because talking about technology, we have, we have accessible and we have costless, one of the most critical resources that we had in the past, which is, you notice something strange or normal in my attitude? What I have in my hand? Smartphone. Because this that is digital allow any person to reach the up-to-date know-how and experience just touching. We have in our hands via digital, the knowledge of the world, up to date to 10 seconds ago <laughs> or, or now. Th this is, uh, uh, is why you are smiling, conscious or unconscious, but we are happy because knowledge today is at the availability of any person, more or less is freedom. It, sorry, it's free, free is the access. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you very much for sharing experience. We have a, a lot of uh, past foreigners. You are a past foreigner. You used to be Jordan. Now you are already <laughs> and with you all, all, all our guests. I hope uh, you, you enjoy the stay. And, uh, uh, and, and this is the attitude of Apollo. Sharing experience, shaking hands, and definitely Smiling. Can I have your smile? Yes. I make a picture with your smile. <laughs> Stay what? One moment. One, two, three. Smile. Done. Thank you. Thanks to the director of Technology Park, Alto Adriatico. I give the floor to Antonella Varesano from the University of Udine with a presentation of multimedia and creative best practices. Please, Antonella. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for inviting me. I briefly describe myself. My name is Antonella Varesano. I'm a senior digital consultant. I'm a teacher in the Union University. I teach a topic uh, which is called social digital innovation, which is the application of digital service in a social way, I mean, not only in social, but in how to build new services for a new digital society. So my background is in uh, philosophy and my PhD is interaction design. So I put together the humanistic um, skills with the technological skills. This is my main purpose. Uh, I'm specializing how to use technologies as a creative tool in schools and universities and even in company. And I would like to share with you some two best practices done with my students. Now, Eva, I try to, to share the video. Is, is it okay? Yes, we can see the present. Can we you can see, see the presentation, presentation and also the note? Or not? Eva, please. Tutto benissimo, tutto benissimo, Antonella. Procedi pure. 
ma e le note le vedi? Eva, scusa, vedi le note? Sì, le note le vedo, però puoi procedere lo stesso? No, allora facciamo così. Facciamo normale. Ok. Uh, ok. So I would like to share two uh, best practice done with my students. The first one was in Trieste, with the Casa del Cinema in Trieste. And uh, the second one was with, with my student in the Unine University. So just to be um, in brief, just to try to make a panorama of the situation of uh, digital technologies, I mean, immersive digital technologies. M maybe all of you knows that we move from the graphic computer to the augmented reality, then virtual reality, then mixed reality, then extending reality, 360, 3D, hologram, and then the RFID, uh, IOT of things, digital twins, NFIT, digital big, big data, artificial intelligence. I would like to stress this situation because all these digital technologies are doing an hybridization. And it means that work all together, creating a new reality. And this is very important for us because extending reality is this new kind of reality. Extended realities is only an umbrella term. It's an umbrella term in order to say how is the situation of immersive technologies that I already said included augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, then become extending reality. A very important topic is the extending reality is an immersive reality that is not really complete because all the situation that arrive now build a new kind of extended reality because the technology never end. And this is very important to, um, to understand. At this moment, as I already told, the augmented reality is only make objects inside the reality and give some more virtual information that in a, in a way overlay the real world. In virtual reality, the experience is totally immersive, require of course a headset and of course the industries mostly the military and engineering um, industry are very well related to use in a very uh, important way, the, the virtual reality. And then the mixer, the mixer realities is a kind of combination. So you have the headset, but then you can have only kind of smart object that I can help you to be more immersed in the reality. There's a lot of study done about the future of extended reality. And in Europe, it seems that in 2025, we will reach an average for 35 to 65 of billions. And even is expected, is expected that there will be a lot of people, more than 1 million of people will be expected to work in extended reality. This is the situation in the worldwide, the augmented reality, the virtual reality and the mixed reality increase a lot. Look, we are there around 2021 and we will increase a lot, more than 250% more, which is a too big situation, I think. In Europe, there's a very interesting situation because in Europe, extended reality is going mainstream. And uh, going mainstream, maybe uh, it will be a lot used about the entertainment. So the creative and cultural industries, performing art, architecture, design, 
communication, cinema, video, we will be more, more and more involved about extended reality. And the Europe tried to force this situation in, uh, in a very strong way. As I told you, uh, with the extended reality, uh, with the mixed, the hybridization of all these technologies that I already explained, this technology combined together produce a lot of different application. And this is a, a lot of, um, and this is a strange thing because we can put this application not only in the entertainment, but of course we can use it in many different fields. Uh, games, museum, art, marketing, tourism, design, cinema, education, fashion, but also in sport and also in the health, in the health um, medicine. Okay, this is the um, my favorite uh, uh, my favorite topic. This is my my topic. Um, in um, in the U in in the ICC in the in the production of the creative and cultural industries, we have uh, uh, the digital convergence. The digital convergence convergence is a topic very interesting because we don't have no more a barrier from products and services. Some products and services are together, are hybrided together. So a product can be, be can be a service and the service can be a product. So the mobile phone, which is uh, the, um, the, the, the director of the polo explained uh, before, is a perfect example of hybridization and digital convergence. Because you, you, you don't know now which is the product and which is, is the service. I mean, hardware and software work together in a perfect convergence. So since 1974 in, uh, in UK with the SIGGRAPH, uh, we um, experienced the possibility to use um, uh, virtual reality as a virtual art. And I start to study um, in, in 80s this, um, this situation. In 2001, in, uh, in Japan, in Tokyo, they built the building digital museum, the Mori. So, and then the philosophy of immersive space change in all over the world. The philosophy was to create a space uh, to collect, to use uh, in a collective way. In Italy, in 2005, a friend of mine, my ragazza Mattei, built the, the Meat Center in Milan. And uh, if you are in Milan, please, you have to go to see this place because it's a, it's a digital art space devoted to immersive technology, extended reality, but even more. And there are more than nine years that YouTube have a special sec section for VR, AR, and 360. And now they are working uh, on a new creator lab and you can use uh, YouTube VR creator lab to do product using um, extending virtual and mixed reality. So briefly, I would like to show you this very small and very little best practice which I've done with my students. I already told you the first one was done in Trieste with the regional found of the region Friuli Venezia Giulia Porfesre. And the second was done with my student in the Udine University in, um, in 2020. The lab in uh, Trieste was done with this uh, machine, the VR 360, and uh, it was a communication product in order to uh, communicate the, um, the project of the Casa del Cinema, which is a building 
devoted to the association that work on the cinema field. And this is the result Can you see the, the screen? Yes, we can. It's okay. Processing. So this is a 3D. It is me entering the cinema, the Casa del Cinema. Benvenuti. Questa è la Casa del Cinema. Sorry, is in Italian. <laughs> Sorry. Siamo in Casa del Cinema, associazione Casa del Cinema è un'associazione di associazioni, è composta dalle associazioni che hanno sede in Piazza Duca degli Abruzzi, nell'ex casa del lavoratore portuale. L'associazione è composta da, dell'associazione fanno parte il Teatro Miela, Cooperativa Bonaventura, l'associazione Mare Metraggio, Look, we mix Adri, together. Cappella Underground, eh, Virtual Reality e non Borschi. Augment reality. Il palazzo è della regione, è un palazzo molto bello, è stato ristrutturato in maniera filologica perfetta e ha una storia, una storia che nasce dagli anni dal 38 in poi e l'associazione Casa del Cinema come idea fondante è quella di Look, valorizzare the the augment reality inside the virtual reality. Quindi non sovrapporsi all'associazione stessa le loro attività che hanno una Look, storia ed una tradizione e che manterranno le attività fino a all, quando avranno da diffondere. Ma l'associazione Casa del Cinema deve servire per poter coordinare in parte questa associazione, valorizzarla al massimo e dare quelle ricadute al territorio che valorizzano la cultura di Trieste e anche della regione nelle attività cinematografiche, espandendosi e cercando di fare anche qualcosa di diverso da quel che si fa attualmente. Eh, quindi le prossime attività di Casa del Cinema, la cosa principale sulla quale stiamo puntando tutto quel che abbiamo noi di storia, di tradizioni, di cultura, so di go, è l'attività di Casa del Cinema. Perché penso che tu hai capito che è una comunicazione di prodotto in order to explain in 3D what's happening e che avrà attività Eccoci arrivati al quarto piano del palazzo di Casa del Cinema. Then we explain all the details strepitosa. Il palazzo delle Generali. L'ex palazzo Carciotti della Capitaneria di Porto. Il Teatro Verdi, più in fondo la Piazza Unità con davanti il Molo Audace, che è uno del, dei simboli di questa città. E poi quando si volge lo sguardo dall'altra parte, verso nord, possiamo vedere il porto. It was a cloudy day. <laughs> It's a pity, it was a very cloudy day. Now I see that we have done all the shooting in a very cloudy day. <laughs> so the augmented reality was very interesting because you can show even some details that you can do with the... Trieste Film Hub è un progetto della Regione Friuli Venezia Giulia. È nato per dinamizzare il mercato. Sostanzialmente si tratta di un progetto di innovazione dedicato alla ricerca e sviluppo su alcuni argomenti che riguardano le imprese culturali creative e il loro futuro. So this was an experimentation around three years ago. Oh, now we move toward another small project that I present with my um, student uh, to the director of the Polo Tecnologico Franco Scolari. Uh, so this was in, uh, in 2020, uh, it was during the pandemic and only four, uh, only four students can attend to this presentation. And we made a pitch in the Polo Tecnologico 
just to, so, to show the work of the students during my lab. Um, and it was very, very hard for me because we, we, we did, the, the, we did the, the lab during the pand pandemic via, uh, via remote or via streaming. And it was very, very hard. But these students, they were fantastic. And they, and they realized this small um, presentation in how to, to use a special visual guide for the city of uh, Pordenone, uh, for the people that want to, uh, to have some information before visit a place. Of course, this, is, this was not the, the real shooting in Pordenone. This is a, a, a kind of pieces bringing from the YouTube just to show this presentation because the, the real project will, will be never done because during the pandemic something happens and then it was very, very difficult to find the budget for this project. But let me show you. Uh, I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's still in, in Italian. was in Venice that we found some shooting online. And this will be the, the possible future using an app for all the visualization and how to develop, put some events, cultural events. together a place. Okay, uh, I think that my time is uh, finished. And uh, if you want to have some information about uh, this small possibility to use technologies as a creative tool for cultural um, situation or for tourism. This is my email and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Antonella. Let's summarize a little bit and try to integrate the three speeches we had. So we started with presentation of Christian about this place as a lab to experiment trends and scenarios with digital technologies. Then we had uh, Eva, who brought us to the outputs of Project Bull. The director of Technology Park said that potentially we have knowledge in one small tool in our pockets, mobiles, which is a simple tool that probably doesn't perform very well like cameras or uh, 3D cameras and so on, but it's the start to do uh, little projects. And then uh, uh, Professor Varesano, who brought us a show in presentation showing 
what we can do. Thanks. It's a perfect combination of research done by the university with students and uh, efforts from uh, the uh, enterprises on the side of um, Christian Fiorot. Now uh, we had to bring this combination of research and technology to the project Bull. And uh, we have two presentations, one from University of Beirut, Professor Carney, who will explain us what we did with uh, tools uh, bringing digital technology. So we made some training in uh, fall 2022 in Matera using uh, mobiles to shoot images of the territory and make some territorial marketing. Then uh, a presentation of uh, done by the director Francesco Dragone about uh, editing of documentaries to valorize territories, products, and local community. These two speeches are focused on uh, Project Bull and will explain some results. Please, um, Professor Carney, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Diego, and uh, my thanks to Diego and Eva and everyone involved uh, with our, this organization for inviting me uh, to be part of it and to be here today to share some of the uh, results of our collaboration with you all. And um, I also understand that uh, today, today is Diego's birthday, so I'd like to wish him a happy birthday. Thank you. Um, I think I was invited to take part in this project uh, due to my role in the project I'm show showing on the screen right now. It's a project called The Sheep from the Future, uh, where uh, we're looking at shepherding in the highlands of Lebanon. And my role on this project was basically to shoot and create a documentary on the role of uh, transhumans and the life of the shepherds that are uh, that are working in transhumance in Lebanon today. So that's a little bit of the background. I'm a professor of media studies at the American University of Beirut. Um, to get involved with this project, uh, or my role in the project really uh, started with discussions between um, uh, Diego, Eva, and Antonella, who we just heard from and myself about how we could develop a training uh, to help people uh, learn best practices for the use of uh, cell phones in recording videos to um, eventually make short documentaries about uh, the uh, best practices regarding wool in the region. So our, um, our uh, goal in the project, uh, th this, this is shared is everything all right? Are you guys hearing me okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So um, these are the goals that we set out with when we had this uh, workshop in the in Matera in the Basilicata region, uh, learning some skills, coming to some consensus on the themes and goals for the project, practicing, uh, then sharing these practices with uh, local teams and eventually collaborating on a project-wide video. And uh, we did two sessions in Matera. Uh, in the morning, we kind of introduced elements of filmmaking. Again, this is a curriculum that Antonella and I developed together in conjunction with uh, Diego and Eva especially. Um, we talked about photographic techniques and uh, and getting informed consent from uh, people who were involved. And in the second section, uh, the afternoon, we talked about uh, capturing audiovisual, basic editing, and kind of coding the videos, et cetera. So that's um, what we did. And uh, in the second session, we, we more specifically talked about um, the kinds of things you could do on cell phones the do's and don'ts of using a cell phone to create video. And then I'm going to just skip through a bunch of slides here. Uh, to note Is that we brainstormed. What, what, what can we do? What, what uh, with an afternoon in Matera, are the objectives that we can go out and, uh, and shoot in the nearby areas? 
uh, for that afternoon. And then eventually what would be the objectives for the longer term videos. And uh, we came up with a kind of, we had a, a rough idea of where we might start and uh, ended up at this kind of uh, collaborative document. Uh, Antonella had run the Italian version of the workshop simultaneously with myself running the English version of the workshop. We generated keywords. We decided that we wanted a short promotional video that showcases diversity of people, places, and practices in the Adriatic Ionian region, encourages sustainable trade and tourism, and establishes territorial and brand identity. And so you can see there on the screen uh, what we had felt might be uh, the most useful things to, to try to do overall and to aim for in that afternoon. And we were very fortunate in so far as uh, the uh, organizers in Matera, along with Diego and Eva and others, had set up for us some uh, visits to various sites where people were making cheese, where they were, uh, where uh, flocks of sheep were migrated to in the summer and then migrated elsewhere in the winter. And so we got to visit a, a number of places where we could see some of these practices at work and practice ourselves with shooting the footage uh, on the cameras that either individuals had on their own or with a couple of cameras that the project had purchased. And this is kind of the idealized goal we had set out for the afternoon session, practicing various skills, um, which you can see there on the screen, uh, practicing with the gimbal, that is the stabilizer that uh, we had uh, thanks to the project and, and practicing some techniques with audio. Now, um, this was uh, quite exciting. Uh, we, we, we had a good time practicing, um, but we had very limited time uh, to, to get to learn these skills. So the footage we had was uh, here and there, some of it excellent, some of it a little bit rough. Uh, but eventually the next step of that was taking this footage and uh, presenting it uh, to uh, Francesco, who will be speaking next. I'm just trying to uh, shift this so I can see another part of the screen here. And so I did a, a kind of rough coding of the footage that we had um, shared here, uh, presented that to Francesco, and he, uh, he brought that all together in a couple of videos that we have here today um, to share with you. And I'm just going to share the first one, uh, which is loosely based on the footage that we that we collected on that uh, day in Matera, uh, but which was heavily supplemented supplemented with uh, with other work, uh, which includes uh, material from the project, from elsewhere in the project, and interviews. And then I'll let Francesco introduce uh, his own work, and we can share the second, a little bit longer video at that point. So. I just want to check, are you able to hear the sound folks? Because I wasn't able to add uh, the yes. special sharing for some. You are, okay, great. At least. La murgia è un pascolo arido, secco, quindi le però crescono solo qua e si mantengono mantengono sempre anche l'estate mia nonna per esempio sarebbe molto contenta di quello che stiamo facendo perché lei ci teneva particolarmente al suo lavoro e cerchiamo di farlo insomma nel, nel modo migliore le difficoltà che ci sono eh, diciamo sono più che altro per il posto in cui viviamo è un paese comunque piccolo per cui non abbiamo un mercato vastissimo però eh, diciamo che Avigliano comunque risponde bene c'è ancora gente che apprezza l'artigianato e apprezza la tessitura Continuiamo ad andare avanti pur avendo delle perdite con l'azienda di allevamento soprattutto perché siamo riusciti a, a sviluppare l'agriturismo Siamo in Proli Venezia Giulia e la carsolina oistriana è una delle, delle razze in via di estinzione che abbiamo qui 
e appunto l'idea proprio di garantire l'economia circolare è quella di, ehm, di recuperare la lana da comunque un prodotto dal territorio, eh, la lana appunto di queste pecore in via di estinzione e trasformarla in pellet in concime fertilizzante che poi torna sempre sullo stesso territorio perché viene riutilizzato come concime dagli stessi allevatori. Let me unmute myself. Uh, we lost power here and I didn't want you to hear the beeping of the uh, of the UPS. But that's the first of uh, shorter video of the two that were produced out of this project. I think uh, we can say uh, buon lavoro uh, to Francesco and everyone else involved there. I'll reflect just for a moment on some of the lessons that I took away uh, from this and then I'll, I'll, I'll turn that over to Francesco. I think from my perspective as, as one of the educators involved, I, uh, I was trying to fit a lot of material into two sessions and I might uh, either take more time for that or, or use less material in future uh, practices. Although uh, the, the people who participated in the workshop were, were very patient. Um, I think we might use a little time uh, focusing more on the specifics of how to shoot animals. Uh, because the, the, the animals were very expressive and, and uh, some of the most intriguing shots we got were of them, but it's not something I had focused on myself. Um, in, in the future, I, I would recommend uh, people request videos from the participants in advance to kind of get us a, a sense of uh, where they are before the workshop. And uh, finally, just a bit more time to practice. But that having been said, It, uh, it was a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I'm very grateful for it and, uh, and grateful for the work that everyone uh, did on it. Um, and, uh, and I thank you all for the chance to be involved and to be here today. Uh, and with that, I will uh, turn it over to Francesco unless there are questions that people have for me. Any question for Professor Carney? No, I don't see hands raised. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with you. Um, the floor is to Mr. Dragone, please. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Josh, uh, especially for connecting me uh, with Eva and, and Diego. Happy birthday, Diego, by the way. <laughs> Um, it has been an honor uh, to try and translate and, and summarize in, in video uh, such an interesting, interesting project. Uh, I will give you a short uh, uh, just introduction to who I am. Uh, I'm a visual anthropologist and a documentary filmmaker. Um, and I'm, I'm based in Italy now. And uh, I was delighted to take part of this, uh, to this project, especially um, because it's such a You know, it's such a wide and dense and rich project. Uh, in the brief presentation that you see this morning, uh, you were able to connect the dots and see how local businesses are connected to shepherds and several countries sharing knowledge uh, to improve and promote the use of wool to the rest of uh, Europe was actually the sense uh, of this project. So I don't want to take too much time. Uh, but I just want to stress uh, kind of in a, a bullet point, uh, the importance of knowledge transmission, first of all. Um, so it's normal to see generational clashes or, or shocks um, throughout our uh, time on the planet. <laughs> and, I, and I see these more often and kind of compressing time. Um, but it's, it's very interesting, uh, the attempt of overcoming Uh, these clashes um, and, and try to co-write uh, a, a new history. Uh, we saw the kind of like uh, getting back to the lands by, by youngster, uh, but it's important to go back to this land with the knowledge of the ancestors. And so in that sense, it's very important to try and make an effort to record what's happening nowadays 
especially to take part uh, of this uh, progression, this transition, uh, knowing uh, how tough it was in the past and how technology, since we are in the polar technological and Adriatico, even if virtually, um, technology help us uh, nowadays. Uh, the other thing uh, that I want to stress is the importance of creative content production, because all the efforts that uh, you'll see in, in the video that, uh, that Josh is going to show you after my presentation and the one that you, you just saw, um, it's connected to uh, tell a stories, um, a story that move from the bias that are connected to the objects and the places and the disciplines and professions. Um, because one of the first thing that Diego and Eva taught, uh, told me um, was the importance of trying to remove all those biases because we create a story in our mind, but then it's very different to be immersed in that space. Uh, so thanks again to the technology that nowadays we have. And uh, uh, as Professor Varesano uh, underlined before, it's important to try and put yourself into that place and technology help us just do that. Um, global warming and climate change force us to come up with new solution for a more sustainable future. Uh, so the peculiarity of this project, the project world, uh, it's that is transgenerational, transcultural and transversal. So it puts together everything to try to make sense of a dense region such the Adrian, the Adriatic Ionian, Ionian region, um, in order to promote the preservation of different ecosystems, uh, such as the one that were studied during, during the project. Um, I'm at the end of my presentation, but I wanted to acknowledge and thank all the people who participated and share their images to make the short documentary that you're about to see possible. Um, um, and thank you all for helping us disseminating the results on this important day, um, because this project and the knowledge that the whole project built in the Adrian region uh, is now in your hands. Thank you. I'll let Josh do his magic. <laughs> The Wool Project contributes to the conservation of wool as an important natural resource and to the protection of the cultural heritage of traditional handmade wool products by enhancing regional cooperation and knowledge sharing and by promoting a shared Adrian regional brand. The Adriatic Ionian region is rich in wool-based tourist potential and wool is deeply rooted in the region's cultural heritage. Wool supply chain includes sheep breeders and wool producers, as well as artisans, experts, public and private support organizations, and other relevant stakeholders from Friuli Venezia Giulia and Basilicata regions in Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, Greece, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Montenegro. These actors have been engaged in identifying resources and capabilities for wool production, creating a regional strategy for the use of wool-based resources, developing wool-based tourism products through enforcement of existing local professions and awareness on wool use, as well as establishing the Adrian Wool Network and promoting the regional brand wool. One of the biggest challenges is overcoming how wool is currently perceived. Nowadays, wool is rarely processed and is instead discarded and destroyed. With the emergence of modern technological achievements, traditions, old crafts, and the use of natural materials are disappearing fast while the number of people with knowledge of handicrafts and making wool items has decreased. The tradition of processing wool and making wool items has become increasingly rare over time. The tradition has declined from generation to generation to a critically low number, so much so that today it survives mostly as a hobby, thanks to enthusiasts. Each territory has its own differences in wool quality, processing capacities, and local selling capabilities. Some are driven into handcrafted artisanal products, while others explore innovative alternatives of wool usage, such as natural fertilizers. 
Based on market analyses from Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, and Greece, Wool Project has created a branding strategy framework that will boost customer awareness and the position of wool-based products and wool-based touristic experiences. Wool's brand combines local heritage, tradition, and nature to create enormous appeal and potential on the market. Across the Adrian regions, Wool's main slogan is Wool We Like. This slogan builds positive sentiment towards wool material and wool-made products. It helps to connect artisanal wool products to sustainable tourism and an ethical supply chain, and helps grow the wool brand through awareness, networking, and authenticity. Thank you, Josh. Thank you all. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you. Uh, before uh, calling a break or a coffee break, I would say that there is a key word in the project bull that is uh, end market linkages. This is the perfect place for end market linkages and for uh, interaction between the actor of the four helix. So in the agenda, we have uh, universities, professionals, and uh, companies. Uh, those who are not from Pordenone, please be in touch because uh, this center wants to develop uh, relation with uh, public bodies, municipalities outside to develop future projects together. And we would like to be in touch with the universities. So Antonella, Josh, be in touch to develop uh, works and a uh, new project on media studies and media tools. Uh, our wish as Technology Park and as a consortium company to do something together with all of you. Thank you. And now it's time for the coffee break. 15 minutes, something like that. We take a break of 15 minutes. Thank you. I'll check. I'll This is a very interesting project. Uh, yeah, uh, I investigated before how to make wrapper plaster. And here in uh, uh, Europe, you need these wrapper uh, plaster for renovation in uh, the old buildings. And wool is one of the key. Uh, uh, Ingredients oh, that uh, maintain that process. Mm -hmm. So it is very good. And we make uh, also, uh, we use the This is a product that we put in the uh, My product is wash feature product. It's more than So you can come as a a lot of people keep this little I'll try to read the, the, the material first. Thank you.
Yes, let me check because I should have. You can okay. uh, maybe if you have some time uh, today, we can uh, no, we can because, yeah. because then the, the day is I think is.
Ciao Antonella. Ci senti? Ci sì, senti sì, bene? Io ci sono. Benissimo. Okay. Perfetto. Ok. Preparo la presentazione mia. E sì, c'è da dire in particolare che anche quest'altro progetto parla di creatività. Start in two minutes, the second part of the seminar. Okay. Uh, it's time to talk about the second project, project DigiCrea, it's an Erasmus plan, Erasmus plus with Spain, with uh, the city of Almeria, and with uh, an association that deals with uh, creative industries. The match was uh, important for us because it um, allowed to uh, a company to experiment, to train a number of uh, young uh, people to uh, bring their ideas into potential startups. The uh, creative um, training was done in Pordenone in the last months and the same in, uh, in Almeria. Uh, the project manager of the project is uh, Eva Canevarolo, who will uh, introduce the project itself and its results. Please, Eva. Thank you, Diego. Uh, so DigiCrea means digitalization and creativity uh, in entrepreneurship. Um, so this is my presentation. So of, co of course, uh, with this project, I'm not the only one. Uh, we we compose um, a team, a very interesting one, with the um, collaboration between creative, creative and cultural experts, professors, um, entrepreneurship expert, and business business support experts. And what we want to do with this project is basically. Um, so let me present, sorry. So DigiCrea is about knowledge exchange and knowledge, knowledge transfer. Um, as Diego said previously, it is financed by the Erasmus Plus program and is co coordinated by the Polo, Polo Tecnologico Adriatico in Pordenone, and it will be carried out in collaboration with the Spanish NGO uh, with a cultural and creative vocation, La Periferica Cultura Contemporanea, which is located in uh, Almeria. Probably you know Andalusia, like uh, that region, this very nice uh, place. Eva, scusa, è ancora fermo la prima slide. <clears throat> sì, ora vado avanti, grazie. No, non vedi? Che cosa vedi adesso? La prima, la, la slide di Gicrea, quella con la lampadina iniziale. Non scorre la presentazione. Ho capito. Allora proviamo di nuovo. Facciamo con... Uh... 
forse. Così vedi? Ottimo, grazie. Grazie, thank you. Uh, so, very briefly, what is Polo? Uh, so, Polo is a technology transfer that promotes the dialogue between enterprises, institution, and regional research system to support company throughout their competi competitiveness and to stimulate the growth of enterprises with high potential development. Polo is an incubator. We incubate approximately 60 uh, to 70 enterprises at different level of supporting um, uh, so services. And, um, and also we work a lot with the European project and cooperation project. And we, uh, with this project, um, uh, I, I just want to say that um, we are the right player uh, in the territory because um, we co-founded uh, the cultural and creative industry cluster. And so we manage together with other uh, public bodies, the, the cluster, the regional cluster of the cultural and creative industries. Um, no, it's not moving. Uh, I don't know why. Probably if I share the PowerPoint and then I move here. Antonella is working. Okay, great. Is it still working? So the other partner from Spain, um, from Alunia, uh, seeks to value the cultural life of the city and the province from an innovative vision supporting and promoting local talent, international exchange and cooperation. Uh, so they try to involve the citizen and the participation, the very uh, bottom participation for artistic and cultural projects that so to promote um, contemporary uh, issues and innovative challenges. Um, La Periferica strategically cooperate within this project with Classy Jazz, uh, which um, Antonella and I um, visit already. And we, we saw that it's pretty interesting for cultural purposes because daily um, it spread different type of music, including classic and jazz, and it creates a great atmosphere uh, valuable for um, the public audience. And again, in here, there is a, a very strong uh, synergy be between different entities. Okay, let's move like that. So the general objective of the project is to create a virtual innovative and creative app for the transfer of knowledge, skills and best practices. So with this multiplier event, we are exchanging best practices in the field of creative and cultural media, multimedia, um, transfer of skills, uh, we did already with two different training courses. We, um, we had in Portenone at the beginning of January, 2023, um, a very interesting course that uh, Professor Varesano will uh, explain later on in details. Uh, so to integrate and um, so to explain and uh, try to enforce a little bit the competencies in the digital uh, here. Um, indeed, the specific objective of the training future, um, so entrepreneur capable of facing business challenges is around these uh, kind of uh, challenge. So we, Together with all the participants at the training courses, we try to focus on the ESG approach. So how a business can be uh, much more focused on the sustainable way. So how to improve all the part of the business, 
um, by following the environmental, social and economic aspect. And um, we gather already some business ideas to, to be narrowed uh, and um, detail better during the um, uh, internship that all the participants will do um, during uh, by May 2023. Uh, so the core action, sorry, I missed out this. So the core action are training and internship. Uh, so as I mentioned before, we, we had a very interesting training course dealing with digitalization and creativity um, and also business development um, in order to create the basis for conceptualizing and co-creating resilience and sustainable business models on a local scale. Um, of course, for doing so, um, we create a network, a local one, um, transnational, because uh, in Almeria they uh, engage. Non so perché mi fosse la tutti questi legati. Sì, sì, no? Ok. So you see what you see the technology. Ok. So um, I was saying that for uh, of course putting in place the training and the internship we collaborate with specific companies we uh, collaborate in Pordenone with the foundation welfare welfare Pordenone that works to precisely to remove the economic and social obstacles that prevent fragile and vulnerable people from living a satisfying life. So they offer specific services and microcredit services around these uh, specific sphere of intervention. Uh, the lean experience factor, which is um, a very interesting example of the factory of the future, uh, which is a model the if I remember correctly, the widest model in Europe for um, experiential workings like um, uh, training on digitalization and also uh, all the other enabling technologies such as virtual reality, immersive realities and other technologies mm -hmm. on, that, on that sense. Uh, we also have Valutin uh, that support brands with eagerly innovative professional solution conceived and implemented in um, flexible and applicable uh, to the video and digital world. So they try to customize all the creative video for um, each client that they have, and um, they they create a network of. Um, enterprises, expert, in order to um, conceive to a common vision and a common objective on the video production. We also have a digital agency, which is a web agency that develops creative contents by using new technologies, such as augmented realities, um, commerce, 3D routing and geolocation and other services. Um, we collaborate with the municipality of Pordenone in the selection of the trainees uh, because they ended up uh, a very uh, nice project dealing with the engagement of, tu of students, people, young youth uh, in order to give to Pordenone as a city um, much more um, active participation uh, um, so young active participation and th these uh, young people 
had the chance to create their own project ideas and uh, they received awards on this on this field. So we we thought it was interesting to um, create a synergy on that. Um, so the expected impact of the project um, are these uh, this one, so increasing the sense of initiative, entrepreneurship, and creativity all together, because creativity is quite applicable into different spheres. And of course, there is not a unique definition of creativity because anyone of, of us has um, their or his uh, own creativity. Uh, but in a traditional way of uh, creating the business uh, idea, we can put and create much more senses of creativity and also sustainability using the ESG code. Increase the level of digital skills, creating understanding and sensitivity to uh, like um, social and linguistic and cultural uh, abilities. And around the improvement of the series. Um, I would like, of course, to thank you all for the attention and I give the floor to Professor Varesano, um, uh, which will explain much more in details what we did during the training courses and the models, uh, the model, the training models that we developed, yes. Thank you. Okay, I interrupt the sharing. The floor is yours, thank you. Thank you, Eva, thank you, thanks. So it's me once again, it's me. So first of all, I, I would like to bring the, the greetings from Claudia Lantieri and from Alberto Sanchez, who apologize, but uh, due to the, to the work, uh, they cannot be present. So in, in a sense, I, I will summarize, uh, I will be the one that summarize all the work from um, to Almeria and to Italy. So now I can I share my video. Okay. <clears throat> I, is it okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 okay. Also, a DigiCrea project started um, uh, around in in July uh, 2022 when Claudia Lanteri came to, uh, to me and we decided to design uh, this project devoted to creativity and entrepreneurship. The Polo Technological is the coordinator uh, and in collaboration with the Peripherical that uh, Eva already said, which is a cultural and creative Spanish NGO, um, will be the perfect uh, partners that can work together in two specific fields, the fields of technology and companies and the fields of creative and cultural possibilities of a new market. The general objectives of the project was, as already Eva said, to create a virtual center for the transfer of knowledge from skills and good practice between Italy and Spain, and to implement the, 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 the important transition between art, culture, and technological innovation. Then another objective is to carry out the um, spatial market analysis inside the companies and association where the, the inter internship are carried out by, by students. And then of course, one of the main objectives are to bring innovation in ideas in companies and also in the um, creative and cultural sector. The specific, the specific objectives uh, will be different in a way in Spain and in Italy. In, uh, in Spain, we decided uh, to train the future entrepreneurs 
able to develop more the business challenge. And then in Spain, we decided to, to, to make a training course more devoted to uh, the, um, uh, the creative part of uh, the entrepreneurship. So as I told you, the, the um, sorry, because I have a strange, strange visualization, sorry. Um, the training goals in Italy, um, we decided to focus on uh, to present to the director Franco Scolare a couple of projects for companies on the theme of creativity, but mostly related to the digital transition and sustainability. In Spain, we presented, uh, of course, to me, one more time, me, a project group for the realization for the um, design of a cultural event on the theme of digital transition. The general topic of all this uh, training was the balance in sustainability, the balance in citizenship, the new possibility of strategies, idea, and technological services addresses to the new and possible uh, current lifestyle. Okay. Now uh, I will go more in deep in the training uh, results after the training in Pordenone, which was done in, in January, at the, maybe from 9 to 13 in January, and then in Almeria from 23 to 20 to 27. Oh, I love these three photos. It's very, very inspirational. This is the team in Pordenone, <clears throat> Enrico Pusheddu, which is the startup and sustainability manager. Then it's me, as I told you, a digital senior consultant. And then Eva Canevarolo, which is the cooperation project manager, but is a special project manager in this project. The educational uh, program in, in Italy. I wonder, Eva, if you see me and you in the center of the screen. In the center of the screen. Yes, because in my vision, I, I, I see you and me in the center of the skin. No. <laughs> no, you see the correct one? You see the photo of the screen? Yes. yes. Okay, great. It's a metaverse. It's very, it's a metaverse, of course, because I, I, now I see you and me, and of course, Diego, which is near you. So in brief, the educational program in Italy have a couple of steps. In the morning, we see uh, we, we will have a creative living lab using the creative and living lab techniques. And then we, we focus a couple of, um, couple of lessons about the collection of needs and the analysis in the companies. Then of course we have the, the, the time, the, the break for the, for the lunch. And then in the afternoon, we have a, a deep lessons about entrepreneurship and sustainability, uh, mostly done, done by Eva and uh, um, Enrico Pusheddu. Then uh, late in the afternoon, we will visit the, the, the company, uh, which are the partners of the DigiCrea project. During my lesson, I try to uh, develop a um, classical uh, creative process using the Wallace model. The Wallace model is, is, the, is the one of the most classical creative process in order to develop one idea using uh, the most famous and of course, a simple uh, creative um, techniques. Then uh, we use the, all the techniques of the living lab. The living lab, it's a, it's a special <clears throat> process. It's a European use of the creative use of um, sharing ideas. And we use the techniques of the quadruple helic, which is the um, special technique devoted to develop a project in a way of, um, 
of social innovation that put together all the stakeholder, government, academia, uh, citizen, uh, civil society, and economy uh, companies. When you do, um, when we try to develop one idea and you have in your mind the possible results for all the quadruple helix, maybe this uh, idea is very well balanced. And the well balance in the design of one idea maybe uh, is one uh, idea that can succeed. Of course, you, we work a lot on sustainability. Sustainability, it means that we have to be very focused on the planet, of course, on people, and of course, on profit. So we have to develop one idea for that it will be balanced for environment, for economy, and for social uh, situation. Uh, Eva did some special uh, lessons about the 17 goals, the 17 goals of Agenda ONU 20, 2030. And uh, uh, at the end, we will start a brainstorming session trying to be very, very uh, focused in all, uh, all these uh, details that we try to, to focus during the lesson. At the end of that brainstorming, the list was very, very long because we, um, we found, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, around 20, 25 ideas. And then at the end of these 25 ideas, we uh, decided uh, to um, we decided to for, for two ideas the first one was aquare and the second one was the polo networking and we did a pitch with uh, these two proposal to the director uh, franco uh, scolari i don't want to spoil uh, all the details now about these uh, ideas but the first one was uh, devoted to the sustainability using the uh, reutilize of uh, water. And the second one is to um, propose a technological uh, network between, um, between uh, university and technological park. I love this picture. At, uh, in, uh, finally, we, 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 we celebrate our ideas and we uh, will be together to celebrate uh, uh, the, the good ideas that they did. And the next step in Italy will be the internship in the um, five uh, companies that uh, um, Eva already explained. And now we go to Almeria. This is the team in Almeria, Alberto Sanchez, which is the cultural manager and co-founder of the La Periferica, and the Claudia Lantieri, which is the president of Sl Slow Tourism and is a European project manager, and uh, Rachel Page, uh, which is an artist, a wellness expert, a consultant, and also a yoga teacher, which was very, very important in the project in Almeria, because as an artist, they develop with students the idea in a, in a very creative way. And in my opinion, uh, Rachel was, was very, very important in a situation like uh, uh, the cultural uh, use of, um, of creativity. This is the, the group in, uh, in Spain. And the educational program in Spain is, uh, was uh, very, very different. Uh, of course, we start with the wellness, sorry, with the wellness techniques. The wellness techniques was done uh, from Rachel. Then uh, I, I did uh, some special creative techniques. Then Claudia did uh, the entrepreneurship strategies. And uh, at the end of the every day, 
we we've been to the to the company to visit the the company which is um, a place devoted to the cultural event in uh, in almeria uh, from my side uh, i did some lessons about art and artificial intelligence we decided to detect the situation if artificial in intelligence is versus art or, the, or if artificial intelligence is for art. And uh, we work uh, a lot on uh, the creative and uh, adversarial network, which was uh, developed in 2017. And it was the first experiment in all around the, the world um, in order to create some, some special drawing created by artificial intelligence. And this was the starting point in how art and artificial intelligence was mixed together. Then we, we speak about the, another experiment in 2018, which is the, 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 in November uh, in, uh, at the Christie's uh, famous uh, action in New York for the first time, the, <clears throat> they bought the one painting doing by artificial intelligence with a special new algorithm called GAN, which is the Generative Adversarial Network. And for the first time, um, a lot of people uh, try to uh, understand that the new frontier of contemporary art could become the artificial intelligence. Then uh, another special situation happens in 2021 when uh, another um, artist called B. Plee, Mike Winkelmann, did the one NFT, uh, not fungible token, historical um, new NFT for um, digital art. And we uh, spoke and we, um, we, we look a lot of different situation about artificial intelligence. At, at the end, we decided to make uh, a group uh, that work on artificial intelligence. Intelligent. We decided to work with the open AI. The open AI uh, was um, put on the market in 2021, in March 2021. So, and we work with two different open AI on the market. The first one was the image art generator, which is DALI 2. And the other was, uh, we work with chat GPT. These are the output. These are the first, you can see the first artwork that the students done during the course. Very, very impressive, I think. And this is the, 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 the moment when the, 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 the students design uh, with the Alberto Sanchez, the cultural event. And this is the, the moment when the students uh, uh, present to, to me online the cultural event that they design all together. And this is the output. The output is uh, a special uh, event that will take place in Almeria, the 1st of March. And this event is um, three steps. The first one will be the exposition, a collective ex exposition of the artificial intelligence. And um, then there will be one hour of music. Then there will take place one hour of um, food. And then, which is was a very, for me, in my opinion, a, a big and a great idea, one um, psychologist will uh, detect the social profile of people that work with artificial intelligence. And um, 
The internship uh, experience in Almeria will finish soon, the 28th of, uh, of February. And uh, of course, the, 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 the 4th of March um, will be the, 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 the final output. Uh, and as I told you, the final cultural event. And now um, this is the agenda and the leaflet of the day which start around half past six and finish around the, the 22 in, in the evening. And uh, now uh, I send you the, 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 a brief uh, video of um, Alberto Sanchez who developed the, the project with the, with the students. Hello, my name is Alberto and I am a cultural manager and also co-founder of La Periferica Association. It was established, this organization, um, back in 2017. It's a young association and uh, we are working in the area especially of culture and, and creativity um, with a focus on international projects. We um, saw that the, there's a big lack in an area of such uh, organizations with this international profile because um, we have been, the team have been um, living abroad and having many experiences abroad. And since we came back to our city, we realized uh, it was uh, a field that uh, it wasn't explored for other organizations. So we decided to, to create this organization and, and we, we are a team of five uh, five people uh, with five different profiles, but all, but all of us um, related to culture and creativity. Um, we are really happy to be part of this project. Um, we want to thank you, um, uh, Eva and Polo Technological to invite us to be part of this event. Uh, we wanted to be live uh, with you guys, but um, it wasn't possible because of uh, work reasons. So we decided to send you this video and at least to share a bit of what we have been doing and what we will do uh, in Almeria. So thank uh, very much to Claudia because she was the, the brain, let's say, of this project. She created and uh, conceived this project. And also to Antonella because she was a very important part um for the results that we have now um so as you have heard from her uh, about the training in Pordenon and the training afterwards in Almeria she has been present in both of them um, um I can tell that um, we were really happy and satisfied and it was a pleasure to have her uh, with us in the team of teachers um, because she gave a very important input to, to our participants. The profile of our participants, they are um, certified students of uh, BED school, specialized in event organization and tourism. So they wanted to have this um, creative um, perspective in the events and the in the in the events they wanted to organize as a part of the of their job of their future job because they are they are in the search of a job so we saw there was a big potential um with them to explore creative possibilities uh, in this training uh and approach so they can also take some tools practice tools after this training, we send the participant to the internship. They did one month internship um, and um, they just will finish next week. And we will have as a, an output um, the final event on 4th of March. So during this internship, they experience uh, what is to be in a cultural place, in a cultural center, with running many, many different events, many type of audiences. Um, it's a really active place um, where there is a um, hub for different organizations. The main organization is, um, is a company 
but then there is also a foundation and association and also there is um, other organizations um, working in this place as well. So it's kind of a hub of many different organizations, with one of them being the, the, the coordinator. So I we thought that the, this place was um, very, um, but will be very attractive and very um, important for them, so they can um, they can experience real um, real creative uh, creative events uh, in a daily basis in action. You know, so um, I think they enjoyed a lot this training and then the internship. So in the multiplayer event on Saturday 4th, they will they wanted to use the, the artificial intelligence as a technology for this event. And uh, they proposed to do an exhibition and also a performance about uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, in the exhibition, they created artwork, art pieces made by Dali. Um, and also the text of the, of the pictures uh, they did it uh, with ChatGPT, so um, they did uh, two versions, one version made by the artificial intelligence and one version made by them. So the audience have to make this Turing test and find out which description of the art pieces are made by the artificial intelligence and what is made by human. So also they will have a performance um, about uh, artificial intelligence, how how is the process of learning uh, of human behavior and patterns, you know, and also that we will have a lecture about uh, about the psychosocial profile through artificial intelligence of humans and can help us a lot to uh, find out about the patterns of humans. So I think this lecture is going to be really interesting as well. Um, we will try to disseminate and record most of the events so you can follow it some um, sometime uh, in our channels, in YouTube especially. And, and that's it. Thank you very much and keep uh, enjoying this um, event. Uh, thank you for inviting us of being part. And, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we... Thank you to um, Alberto. And only I would like to finish just to say that now the student in Italy in at the end of March will go in uh, in um, to do the internship, and then we will have the the result uh, as soon as we can. Of the um, of the internship in, in Italy in order to to finish all the the project, and uh, I thank you for your time. And if you have some question about this uh, project, uh, you can write me on the email. Thank you. Okay, Antonella, thanks. Thanks, Alberto. Thanks, Eva. This is an experience of cooperation on cultural uh, and uh, on culture and creativity. Uh, we have representatives from partner countries in Montenegro, in Croatia. Uh, why don't we take this experience and uh, I launch the wish to do similar project also with, with your uh, with your countries. Uh, so Antonella, let's keep the eyes open on new calls for uh, um, Erasmus and perhaps we'll do something with uh, our partners of Bull. Thank you to all of you and also with the partners of uh, the UNIDO project we haven't mentioned but some of the guests sitting with us they belong to a delegation of startups coming from uh, Jordan. Uh, the delegation uh, is uh, under the umbrella of the United Nations De Development Organization and they are uh, verifying the entry, their entry to the European uh, market here in Pordenone. They, they are guests uh, for a couple of weeks. 
and we are trying to match them with uh, the economic sector. So even uh, if you like, perhaps there can be possibilities to shift activities also in this side. There is a, an open call of the region Friuli Venezia Giulia for international cooperation and it uh, impacts uh, countries outside of uh, EU. Um, there are two sides of tender, micro project and big project. Micro project is around 50,000 euro with financing of 30 and co-financing of 20 from partners. And the big ones are 150 financing of 90 and co-financing of 60. So we hope we launched some ideas. You have others. If you like to do something in this framework, we are at your disposal. Let's brainstorm a little bit. Thank you all. It's over. Now it's time for lunch and for relax a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Grazie Antonella. Grazie Eva. Grazie Antonella. Ci sentiamo. Ciao. Beh, Ciao. Ti salutare da un ragazzo. Li vedi? Li vedi se non ti andano? Ti salutano? Non sente. Okay. Ciao. Ah, ok, sì, perfetto. Ciao. Presto. Grazie. Grazie a te. È terminata.